A vehicle catches on fire in a parking garage and shuts down the Jacksonville International Airport. Within minutes, it spreads to a dozen vehicles and causes a partial structural collapse. Initial rumors point to a Tesla, but was that really the case? You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. At 8.07 a.m., a dark-colored vehicle parks in the hourly garage at the Jacksonville International Airport. Roughly four hours later, all hell breaks loose. The vehicle starts to smoke, and less than a minute after smoke was seen, it fully engulfed into flames. Initial rumors pointed to a Tesla, but authorities later confirmed it was a BMW. The exact model, it's still unknown. This wasn't just a typical engine compartment fire. Sources state that this wasn't a fully electric vehicle. However, it's possible that this was a plug-in or standard hybrid electric vehicle. The speed and intensity of the fire suggest involvement of a lithium-ion battery. And for clarity, the EV chargers in this parking garage, they were located on level two. And this car, the vehicle fire that started this whole mess, was on level three, well above the charging zone. Shortly after the dispatch goes out, units begin to respond. Engine 16, we have smoke showing from the third floor of a commercial parking garage to make this a second alarm. By this point, multiple vehicles are already involved. Crews arrive to heavy smoke and rapidly intensifying heat. Control to station 16. To station 16, go ahead. Hey, just to let you guys know, the fire is out of control. There's more, there's definitely more than one vehicle on fire now. Acknowledged. Here's the thing, a fire like this, it's already hard. But inside a parking garage with no sprinkler system, no mechanical ventilation, and limited hose access, on top of that, an airport parking garage where all the cars are practically on top of each other, that's a worst case scenario. 10 to 16, we're in the center stairwell, arriving on the third floor. We are, got smoke banging down to the floor, on the third floor. Believe it or not, the fire code was only recently updated to require sprinkler systems in open-air parking structures. However, that will only apply to new construction, not existing structures. Crews had to get creative. Some ran hand lines up stairwells, others used master streams from ladder trucks, and even the airport crash truck responded. Uh, it's inside on the third floor parking garage. I'm going to see if you can get a deck gun on it and get this thing knocked down. Cover that. And while the fire was chewing through more vehicles, flames were moving fast across the deck. Command from Engine 16 P2, we have people on the Charlie side, Charlie Delta Corner, who need help evacuating the building. We're doing the best we can, but we're going to need bodies over here. Pay acknowledge. Roughly 20 minutes into the incident, something major happens. Fire forward all units. There is partial collapse of support beams on the third floor. Do not enter that AB corner. We have a partial collapse of structural beams. This is really a challenging situation because not only do you have vehicle fires, but you're at a busy airport. So you have to account for people that are out there looking for their vehicles, trying to evacuate an entire parking structure. At this point, the fire was still going on. Crews are still flowing water, and now they have to back out. All personnel on the third floor, I see you with a hose line. I need you to evacuate the building, please. Evacuate the building. One crew had the right idea. If you understand building construction, you know that stairwells are typically highly reinforced and essentially separate from the main structure of the building. Fire 5 Command, I got all personnel off the third floor. We're going to set up a mini monitor from a safe place of refuge. That partial collapse happened a lot faster than I would have expected, especially in a concrete structure like that. It was right around the 20 minute mark and thankfully no firefighters were affected. Later, a second collapse would be reported on the same level, the third level. We just had a secondary collapse on the third floor deck. We still have a power of all companies. Acknowledge another partial collapse, third floor deck. In a situation like this, a commercial property, you really have to rely on building representatives. It's almost impossible for fire crews to disconnect power without help, unless you've done an extremely thorough pre-plan. Even 30 minutes in, the escalators were still running. The crews contacted airport officials multiple times to try to help isolate the electricity. Ladder 35, I'm going to have someone from the airport come see how we can get this power shut off. But before we get them here, can you see something about it? See if we can find a main breaker. Fire come from command. Command. Contact the airport and have them send a maintenance person that knows this building 
figure out how we can shut it off. Eventually, the power was partially cut, but not fully. Airport officials even raised concerns about the solar panels feeding energy into the system. I'm up here with the airport officials, and they are not sure about the solar panels being shut off as far as your electricity. I acknowledge. Yeah, repeat, all companies, even though the buildings theoretically shut down, still assume it's energized. Stay away from the wires and don't get inside. In total, over 50 vehicles were destroyed, and probably a lot more than that were damaged due to smoke and water damage. Imagine coming home from vacation and finding you don't even have access to your vehicle. Even if it wasn't damaged in the fire, it's likely trapped in there due to the structural collapse. The fire damaged multiple levels of this garage, with support beams on both the second and third floors being compromised. At its peak, three elevator master streams were hitting the fire, and even then, the struggle was real. It's extremely challenging to put out a vehicle fire from a distance. By the one hour mark, command still hadn't called the fire under control. Why? Because they couldn't even reach all the hot spots. We're probably going to be playing whack a mole with these cars for an hour or two, especially with the structural collapses, so just hang tight. Copy that. To your knowledge, just one car has been the main problem. Here's the big takeaway. Whether the vehicle's gas, hybrid, or electric, a fire like this in an unsuppressed garage will always be a major incident. There's no built-in fire protection, there's no easy way to ventilate, and there's no good way to fight it fast. At an airport, it always seems the parking spots are far tighter than other locations. Add lithium-ion batteries into the mix, even just a hybrid pack, and your timeline collapses shorter and shorter. Your hazard zone gets bigger, and the chance of secondary ignition or explosion, that goes way up. To listen to the full audio from the radio traffic, click the link in the description below. The ARUP, a global engineering and design consultancy known for advising on complex infrastructure projects, recently released guidance for electric vehicles in parking structures. Their recommendations go beyond just installing sprinklers, which frankly should already be standard. They're also calling for increased spacing between vehicles. The addition of fire-resistant barriers to slow horizontal fire propagation and thermal monitoring systems inside the garage to detect abnormal heat before things spiral out of control. It's a recognition that as vehicle technology changes, our buildings have to keep up, not just with suppression, but with smarter design. This fire was a nightmare, and it could have been worse. No civilian injuries, no firefighter maydays, but it's a wake-up call for first responders, pre-planning is key, Know your collapse zones and never assume a car fire is just a car fire. For facility managers, if your garage isn't protected with sprinklers or suppression, you've got a problem waiting to happen.